Morning, ladies. All right. Carol, you bitch. We've been making mustard eggs to try and, uh, what do you call it? Encourage good behavior. Discourage bad behavior here, the egg eater. Um, <clears throat> doesn't seem to be working. She's finding the ones that aren't mustard. Anyway, got a bad case of no mo may happening around here. Um, just put these in here, let us stay cool until later. Just chilling. Um, we got the heavy Chevy today. <coughs> Don, son, Don. Hooked us up with that while the truck's busted. And I'm just heading out to the dump, trying to get back, load the other stuff up, get back to the dump, and get the trailer back. Get a little footage of Sean finishing up. And then the rest of everything. All right, well, it's Wednesday. And the current plan, which I think as we get closer to this actually happening, it's going to be more and more accurately timed, although that's famous last words again, but I think Friday afternoon we're forming and pouring the footer, which means I'm toying with the idea of Friday morning getting Jeremy started at our other site where we're working on that pergola. And uh, if you see that on Instagram, we're back on that, which was a year ago that I posted the last YouTube video about it anyway. That's got to happen. Um, I'm just realizing now that I haven't asked him whether or not he can take and work Friday. <clears throat> um, additionally, my architect is out of the office and unavailable until tomorrow. I just sent him an email and just said, hey, I know you're out until tomorrow. When you get back, can you immediately handle this? I understand there'll be reasonable charges um, you know, to get to it fast enough. But I had a few questions like, the Schedule 80 column called out where the two beams come together uh, isn't anything that anybody knows commonly that I've seen yet. And so unless I have to have it custom fabricated, I basically said, is there something that you know of or you had planned for an application like that? That's essentially a heavy adjustable, adjustable column that meets your spec for that there. Let me know. Um, I should probably ask that sooner because there may be something that I can't order fast enough. Um, what's the other thing? I want that septic stack or sewer stack to pass the beam. Can we move the beam over? Well, the other end of that beam, opposite the front of the house, goes directly to the inside corner of the foundation wall. I mean, the foundation is practically a rectangle, but there's a little notch out of it in the back right, and on that inside corner is where the beam pocket is um, going to be. And so, if I move six inches to the left as you look at the house from the front, well, now do I have to... I'm not going to go that way. <clears throat> do I have to pull the, the the inside corner out like a buttress uh, a bit and then a bit farther so that I've got the beam pocket that I need and then meet beyond it to support the beam pocket forever more and how much of a buttress wall or whatever you want to call that you know do I need there and then third I had hoped to put off this eight foot wall nine foot wall question until you know just a couple of days before which is what I'm down to it and why I'm down to it now but the concrete contractor finally said, and this is my bad again, I didn't ask enough about this, but she said, um, you know, if you want to go from eight to nine, you may have to go from eight inches thick to 10 inches thick for the pour to accommodate the side load from backfilling the hole over that span from the footer to the, to the top of the wall itself under the house load. So I don't know how much work there would be in just turning around to tell me whether I would have to do that or not because she's priced out an eight foot wall and a nine foot wall at eight inches thick and a nine foot wall at 10 inches thick. And I'd think about a nine foot wall at eight inches thick, but not necessarily at 10. And so then it's like pay to expedite some engineering um, that may or may not be quick and simple uh, to get down to whether or not we would have to do the very expensive thing, in which case we won't, whatever. So those things are floating around and um, <clears throat> There was something else that somebody's waiting on me to tell them about. Um, well, I'm going to confirm later today that we are digging and moving dirt to the uh, individual site that's taking all of our fill. I told him I'd let him know that, yeah, tomorrow's the day for sure. I told him I would tell him today. So I've got that to do, and I don't want to forget about it. 
Um, we're going to the dump with this stuff. <clears throat> then we're racing to the site, get the rest, and come back to the dump. Then we're racing to leave off the trailer. Um, and then we'll see what the day's doing and whether or not we stay punched into this project or step out to do a couple other things. Um, that's all I can think of for right now. So, yeah, so... This whole discussion I was having at the end of the last video is because... The existing beams that are installed in old foundations, the top of them is level with the foundation wall. And the floor joist system, the floor system sits on that plane all the way around. Now in the case of our new steel beam, the steel has got a two by six or a two by eight plate bolted onto it or otherwise attached across the top of it. And so that plate works out at the same I've got that wrong again you've got a sill plate around the edge of the house which moves the plane of the surface of the floor down an inch and a half and that's the top of the foundation but then the beam is notched in this case around the sill plate to get back up that inch and a half and be under the end of the floor joists, thereby keeping everything on the same plane. And so the steel, depending on how deeply they make the hole in the foundation wall, the steel sits in flush, and then that plate sits that inch and a half up, which gets you to the bottom surface of the joists. However, I'm leaving the old sill plate on this and adding the two by eight plate to the top of our cast foundation because it has to be bolted for code and I think that in doing this project I've got to have a sill plate that is pressure treated. I don't think they would like it or even let me get away with it if I set the old sill plate down on the new construction foundation. I could double check that but essentially because we'll have a double sill plate and a wood plate on the steel coming I have to know the size of the notch of the pocket in the wall given all of that so that it's cast at the right size. If it's too shallow, I can make it deeper. But if it's too deep, I guess I, if it, it'll be a matter of an inch and a half that we're off for some reason. I could throw an inch and a half, I could throw a layer of PT in there to get us back up. The ideal thing is for us to just get it right. And so that's something that's on my mind. And meanwhile, Sean is getting our wall excavated out for the stem wall for the garage. And then I'll tell you the other thing about the other end of this beam situation. So I'm waiting for my skid steer to warm up yonder, past Mikey. And uh, I'm going to come through this slime path without my boots because they're in my car, which I left at my buddy's to get his truck, along with my coveralls. So that was an error, an oversight. I'm going to come over here and grab and load this stuff out. However, the other end of this beam if I move it over and I was talking about this this morning without a visual aid so this now I'll go right down in here and show you our foundation wall notches over turns goes over there and goes back well right here on the inside corner is where the other end of the main beam is gonna be it's where the main beam is there now and this was the outside of the fold-up foundation. Now we're extending the fold-up foundation out here, and so the new steel goes that much further over to here, and then this goes over and gets doubled or tripled up to be heavier. Or no, this does, gets, it goes off the side of it. This gets doubled up to be heavier, and then the steel beam keeps going. Anyway, I gotta add to this concrete wall, so like a buttress, rather than a smooth outside corner, I think this wall has to come to us enough to get a pocket in it in order to move the beam over to us. That's the situation. So she's calling me back now. I'll have to take the call and see what we can find out. Okay, well, dump trailer load number two. However, we are going to swing by my buddy Chris at his place that he's working on uh, to get ready to move into. <clears throat> he has a pile of underlayment to throw away. He was out at this job site a few weeks ago helping us get the dumpster packed down. And uh, and so he said, if you want to come through my place instead today and add what I've got to your dump trailer, then uh, we could go down to the local dump by him, which is rural. And I haven't got to cut my way through uh, the suburbs with this dump trailer full of debris, asking to get pulled over. 
but it's also free to him once monthly, and so he'll get rid of his stuff, and I'll get rid of Ed's stuff, and I'll save Ed the bill uh, a second time now on the monthly, or on the cost of dumping. It's $78 now, tipping fee to per ton. And so they might prorate it, but uh, there's over 50 bucks worth of weight in this because uh, I've got all the, um, sorry for the bumps, all the cast iron pipe is in there. And uh, what else was really heavy? There was something else that was really heavy that I'm forgetting. Anyway, it's going to be worth it. So we'll head to Chris's and say what's up to him. Just wanted to do a video on this real quick. I'm on my way to dump this still. But you see this field? How uh, you've hardly got any rocks of any significant size. And it's just, sorry about the windshield wipers. But it's just so uniform. That's your gravel soil. That's just a delight place to grow things I grew up on a hay farm and we had some of that but we had a lot of what people call heavy soil see it's even different there a little bit it's getting looking a little heavier there <clears throat> maybe worked up differently or have manure applied to it or whatever right on top without having been worked in for the for the you know which is why it may look different there but um, anyway uh, that's the type of thing that you're looking for when you're going to do excavation work especially to price things uh, or on days like this when it's going to be rainy you can't be working in clay soil um, everything just turns into a slime hole and uh, clay soil holds the water and doesn't allow it to percolate down and so you have problems growing things that would prefer better drainage and so the produce industry cash crops um, the, all that is better off growing in um, in gravel soil and then, you know, rhubarb's kind of a bog plant and some other things that we still eat and stuff like that that we prefer things to be more wet. Anyway, um, that's what we're at on the site. That's what we've got. <clears throat> it's what I'm going to be getting from the gravel pit. It's called bank run. So they take a run at the bank of the gravel pit and scoop it. And so you get filtered bank run. So you can pour it through a two-inch screen or a one-inch screen or whatever. So I'll probably get two-inch bank run since it's a little cheaper than the one-inch because... The one inch first goes through a two inch screen and then it goes through a one inch screen after that. Meaning the biggest pieces are that size, but it goes all the way down to the sand that ultimately can get filtered out at the gravel pit if you're just buying sand. But a bank run through a one inch filter will give you one inch down to sand. And so that's like a, a beautiful gravel soil like that. That's probably, you know, mm, six inch filter most almost everything in that field would go through because here and there there are baseball size or things the size of your fist um, however it's real easy to get that filter down even more so and so at the top we'll probably put a <coughs> a one inch bank run because there won't be anything in that that after I rake it out and tamp it or anything to, to grade it and that I will want to bend over and pick up to get out of our way because it's a problem for the lawn um, it'll just be delightful on top of that one inch bank run and then we'll put topsoil on a few inches and we'll throw seed out and get the, the mulch on top of it. But we'll use bank run gravel to grade and to backfill. And um, I was thinking we'd do that even though there was probably clay and shale around this job site, but there isn't. And so we'll be putting a lot of the same, you know, back in. It'll be a really nice site. He's got a really good piece of property there. Extra deep, old established trees, beautiful old uh, village, affluent kind of spot beautiful type of soil you know brand new foundation and utilities so he's in real good shape here we are down in the gravel pit just around that thought out see there's the bank and this is gravel soil that they own here and that they sell it that's filtering there and there's the two inch filtered bank run and the one inch filtered bank run I'm gonna tell them that's what I want Hey, I gotta get a couple tons of one inch filtered bank run. That's right here, right? I'll just tell you when. This is a lighter truck than mine, so we'll keep an eye on it. Thanks. <clears throat> so I stay where he can see me, and I'm watching the suspension, the wheel gap on the back of this truck, and I'm looking at him, and he's looking at me, and he'll put it in the center here and load me front to back best he can. He's got a scale in his bucket uh, <clears throat> or on the machine so he knows what he's got in there now and then he knows uh, he can also watch me and then obviously I'll weigh out on my way out it's not based on what he can weigh on the machine there I'll stand over here now I guess no no there we go hey you can see me there okay 
just give him this here. Watch that wheel gap. And I think you keep going. That's it. Hang on right there. Hang on. Just one second. A little bit more. That's good right there. That's good. Thanks, man. All right. Then we'll go up and way out and pay. It's like $30 or something for that. So on my way out here, he's got probably wash number one stone there, which is one inch washed stone. That's all the, everything smaller than that out and everything larger than that out. And this is probably wash number twos. This will be what I probably get stone slung into our project. And then you got limestone, which is not coming out of the bank here. This is coming from up north, and I don't know whether they're getting that off the land up there, north of us, or if it's coming in on a rail car or anything else, but that's lime crush. So they usually have a few bigger chunks of it all together, which there's a name for that that I can't think of um, as well, because the thing is it's coming off a solid chunk of rock just massive the whole landscape is that solid chunk of rock so then they crush it down and you get fines in it <clears throat> which is to say it's silty particles that help it to pack up tight that's the big deal with leaving all the fine materials in all the way down you know to the small because that will pack up tightly because every little piece can find a little hole with the water washing it downward over time and things packing it in from above so that's a Lime crush one inch, lime crush two inch. So after they crush it, they put it through a screen. Those are washed stones. And um, you can use bank run straight or filtered to two or to one in the same way that you can use crushed limestone. Uh, it has the material all the way down to fine particles. So it'll pack up nice and tightly. Now some guys like uh, Georgie Construction, he doesn't want to see that. Um, he prefers the wash number two stone under a concrete pad because there's so many air voids in there where there are no small particles to fill it that in his mind the water can fall out of it a lot easier and he's right. Now the guy that I was looking at do the concrete slab pour of the floor in our basement, he likes to see, him see crushed limestone or I could probably get away with crushed gravel uh, for him because he feels that all that being packed up tightly solid is a better base for a, a, a flat floor slab. And so everybody's got a different idea and under different circumstances. I can't say which I like better. I just know that um, we're going to get the wash twos on this. And then I'll have to find somebody who's happy to pour a concrete floor on the wash twos. Just because that's what you want all around the site drain, inside and out the foundation drain. I do want the washed number two stone there. Because that corrugated tile is perforated. And the more of that, those fine materials that wash into that interior tile, because they're on the floor in there as aggregate prep for the pad clog that perforation up now i'm watching in my mirror to make sure my outer the wheels that hang outside the footprint of this truck are going to get onto this narrow scale and over there i know that i have got even more room once i'm totally on it i'll go in and have him weigh me and i'll pay well in this truck <clears throat> that ended up being about 16 bucks eight eight dollars a ton or something i'll pull three or four with my truck uh which is a three-quarter ton pickup this is a half ton pickup, uh, it doesn't belong to me, so a little under two ton, <clears throat> paid cash, and I don't think they collect sales tax when you do that, at least at this place, and um, then I'm just, I use tow mode, uh, which is that little light that comes on that's in a Chevy or a GM, probably you poke the little end of the <clears throat> gear selector stick or whatever, um, it's an auto, anyway, you're in tow mode, so it's not always trying to shift up and cruise and then you find yourself trying to go up a hill and you haven't got any cojones. Um, and so this is great to get on the way home. I was gonna have an empty trailer anyway on the way back and uh, this gravel pits across the street from the dump and so I'm gonna get lunch at home anyway today and I think that, uh, I don't know that I'm gonna finish the day on Ed's project. I'm gonna take the trailer back, but I don't know that there's much more to do over there that's on the clock. I'll go over and get a little footage and check on Sean. And then um, tomorrow is the trucking day, so we'll do that much. And I'll probably wrap this video up over on site in a little while. I feel like there was something else I was gonna say about the gravel pit. Hmm. Well, I think I'm gonna let you know. That's a gravel pit tutorial. I remember what I was thinking 
just one more thing. Um, now you're going down the road with the weight of another car behind you, pushing you. And so with a dump trailer, you want a brake controller and uh, electronic braking. And a trailer should have electronic braking if it's a good dump trailer. And uh, when you hit your brakes in the vehicle, it's also going to brake the trailer for you actively with um, with a, you know electronic signal rather than surge brakes. Surge brakes is just in the hitch itself, and when it gets compressed because you're slowing down and the trailer's still trying to move forward, and the hitch compresses because the one part of it sleeves into the other part of it, it compresses down, hits a switch, and activates braking on the trailer. And it's not gradual or blended or whatever you want to call that. It doesn't fade in. Um, it's simply braking or not braking, which is a bit abrupt, and it's more of an intermediate trailer braking thing. As soon as you go up to a big boy trailer, um, you get electronic braking, and then the vehicle needs to be set up for it. So this Chevy has built-in electronic braking, and with all of those, there's a switch where you can choose to brake the trailer by just grabbing it and going to the max. Um, and so if you're not getting what you want out of it in the moment and there's an issue, you could just reach down and brake the trailer even more aggressively to see what you can do about it. Mostly I drive around super chill, a channel. <laughs> Grandpa Norm from growing up, um, just staying off of everybody's ass, giving them plenty of space, not hounding anybody or tailgating, thinking about the red lights coming, thinking about the vents on the road, and rolling video, <laughs> uh, making YouTube content, and um, it's not a great idea, but there's nobody in front or behind me on the street here, and I got a nice big shoulder, so we're on the road. Anyway, be aware of the fact that now you're a lot heavier and then you should have help in breaking this thing down and be paying attention to what's happening way out in front of you when you're trucking. And, uh, yeah, that was it. All right, now the gravel pit and hauling gravel tutorial is over. Back to the park. So that's two tons. And, uh, and this trailer, you'd probably put, <clears throat> you could maybe put six tons in this trailer. Um which is to say it could be done. Should you do that? Probably not. You Would you want a one-ton pickup to pull it? Yes. Um, and you'll also see, like this thing's gonna work to pick that up. <clears throat> you can watch the weight come off my, watch the wheel gap on the back tire, but um, I'm trying to keep everything in frame here. The whole scenario will change as soon as that load comes sliding out of there, I'll try to be still. Nothing that some people haven't seen before, but just to give you a sense of the, again, potential and kinetic forces that are around. A ton of feathers would be overflowing. You probably couldn't get a ton of feathers into this trailer. But a ton of stone and dirt. There it is. There it is again, so. And I'll pull forward and break abruptly, trying to get that last little bit to fall down. <clears throat> and then try to pack the scenario up and get out of the street. But anyway, that's why we will order this material in 20 ton triaxle dump truck loads, a couple of them, to do our backfilling at Ed's and not presume to bring it in with a dump trailer. I'd love to own a dump trailer for do these little operations. <clears throat> for moving my skid steer around and material it will do everything that I want rather than just getting an equipment trailer that can't do this because it doesn't have anything that will hold keep material in with like walls and stuff on it without building it and it wouldn't dump wouldn't tip up for me so anyway this is what I want to buy not an electric green and not in this even this bad of shape but it's got the pull out ramps and all of that so anyway uh, that's that and I'm gonna grab lunch quick and then take this thing back Okay, so real quick, this is the front of the house as we look at it from the road. And this was the center line location of the original beam. And the far end of it is going to end up essentially right on the inside corner of the foundation. And if you look close, it already bumps out just a little bit there to catch it. Now, if I want to take it six inches over, that's a question of whether we, so the footer is here, we may need a pier we may be additive so the footer actually comes out, maybe connect that pier right over into the footer or some such thing and create a feature here that's heavier and more robust so that the end of the beam can be over to the left another six inches here. All to avoid that drain stack which zigzags over and down so it can just be a straight shot. And so that's what I'm looking for there. This shows the egress window here and, and 
window well, which it's actually going back there. And really, these locations are going to move a little bit because I want it'd be best to have them um, where Sean's beams, where we leave holes for Sean's beams to come down into the new foundation, then slide them out. And if the window opening is even larger than that, well, then it does double duty and we can throw a window in it. And um, it shouldn't force us to put a window in a weird location, so that'll be fine for us here. But that's uh, what we're looking at with that situation, and now it's back to the site to see how far he is. He's pretty much wrapping up, I would think. Okay, so <clears throat> I wanted a one two foot, 250 foot roll perforated four inch, and one 100 foot roll of perforated four inch for a total of 350 feet. But they were out of 250s, so I just got four 100 foot rolls which is fine because it's essentially 40 by 40, the house is. The one way it's 42, so that's a little bigger. So that's uh, uh, 160 around it in theory, times two. <clears throat> You're getting up to one, you know, over 325. Closer to 350 was where I was, whoops, figuring. And then you gotta go around the outside and the inside of the garage. So, got an extra 60, 75 feet here in the 400 feet, that ought to be a little shy, if anything. And then uh, I have some at my place, and if it's under 50 feet, I'll just, that we need and that I have, happy to give it to them. If it's over, we'll buy another roll of, of um, it's 89 cents per square foot, or 89 cents a foot, so not bad now we got everything that we need here I don't necessarily want it right out by the road for sale I say sometimes because it's like even though it's a nice little village here is the best practice you want to leave stuff right out in plain view essentially advertising its availability if you can help it and I don't want to put it somewhere his machines trying to be when he's loading this out tomorrow um, cause that's annoying. So, in here, behind the brush, you know, next to the concrete, um, sidewalk pieces that he's been working around without issue, looking tidy, uh, to the best of my ability. And then we'll go see, as well as a good line of sight to the immediate neighbor, as far as wondering what somebody's doing when they're poking around in there, if that's the case. No one knows, but no one really holds that place down most days, so getting into my pod and taking my tools or Ed stuff is a concern to a lot of you, probably. Um, and I'll knock on wood, but I will just say that we don't really have a lot of that in this village. Um, not that it can't happen, but there you go. Isn't that much bigger than you were expecting? But... Uh, It's looking good to me. Very professional. Love that smooth bucket. So much experience. Virgin undisrupted surface in here. And hopefully he had the ability to get to what he wanted to get to for the most part. Looks like he could reach without an issue. So funny how that goes to the left. And it looks like he even bumped that crib. But that'll all just hold right there. Um, which is good to know. <clears throat> and he got this sort of road and the walking around, carrying pieces of the forms, um, especially the wall forms or whatever they're doing. I don't know that they'll come back, out back to go down in. They may get guys in there and hand them down and over the side. I'll go down and get that trash, whatever that is. We don't have a lot of that here, which is good. And nobody smokes, which is another one I don't like to... I don't smoke, so I don't like to see the cigarette butts or any of that. Which they don't, which is great. And so, we're ready... For... So we could have them form and pour the footer, to, footer tomorrow, but... We can't get here, which is fine. We'll get the uh, material trucked away. I'll watch that coming out of here and we'll go to where it's going and watch it go over the bank once maybe. And um, 
Speaking of which, I got to confirm with that guy that it is coming tomorrow. And that's awesome. Uh, it's just getting real wet over here. All right, well, that's Georgie Day, what, four? Yeah, thanks for watching. We'll see you.